Hey guys, it's Todd Vance, aka Classic Role Player. Today I'm quickly going to show you how to create a dungeon door using Tinkercad, a super simple free online 3D uh, creation program. Let's check this out. Come on. All right, guys, so this is the door in one of my little. Uh, maps that i'm using on my ultimate dungeon terrain and you know it's pretty nice it was pretty easy i think it works just fine for what i'm using it for and i'm happy with it and i did it all in tinkercad so let's head on over to tinkercad.com sign up for a, a an account let's get that going let's get a crack of lacking come on all right so now you've got yourself signed up and uh you can say create a new design right up here we're gonna go quick with this the thing with Tinkercad is you can import some pretty uh, interesting files, but you can't do it with too many uh, vertices that won't allow you to do too intricate of uh, files. So let's just make stuff we, that, that we can with simple basic shapes. So first thing I'm going to do, here's, the, here's my work surface right down here, right? You can see it's in millimeters. If you look at the bottom right-hand corner, it's in millimeters. I want to change that to inches. So I'm going to say, there I am again, in the way. I'm going to say edit grid. And I'm going to change it to inches. Good. Now I can, my snap grid down here is how fast it's, or it, what the uh, lengths that it snaps around in. I'm going to go 64 and then it's like to have uh, a lot better control. So I'm going to take my cube. I pulled the cube out, stuck it right here. I'm going to stick it right at an inch. And uh, you can click on these and you can see that how big these are. Let's say I want this to be an inch long. I'm gonna, I can just write in one inch just to make sure it's correct. I use my right button or my right mouse button to swirl around a little bit. I use my middle scroll button. If I push it in, I can go up and down. I can scroll in and out. Uh, you can see we have an arrow here that will take me up and down on the Z axis. Uh, I want to be zero. I don't want to be in the air. That doesn't print very well. Um, and I don't, I'm don't. i going to make this. This is going to be the base. So now that we know that, we're going to smush this, make it smaller. Uh, I want it to be about point. Oh, two, I think, so that it's thin, uh, not too thin, so thin it's going to break. It doesn't, it's not, it's pretty, if you use a 3D printer PLA, that's pretty thick. It's thick enough and it stays out of the way. Uh, I like to have this just so actually just smaller than an inch. My guys at an inch get in the way of other things. So I'm going to say 0.95, and this is way too, I do not need this at all. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say point. 4.5 let's go half an inch yeah all right that's a good base now i am right in the middle actually i'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it on, on a grid line because i want to put my door base oh, i gotta click on it and then i can use my arrow keys to move this around so there all right i want my door base right in the middle of this so it's going to be easier to do it that way here's my door looks kind of gross doesn't it let's go with a point two door um and again, we don't want a full one. We want probably a 0.8. Right now, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to bring it right over on here and try to eyeball it, get it right in the middle. So I want that line right there probably in the middle since this is one, two, three, four. I want to be, I want the middle of my door to be right in the middle of that line. That looks about right. That door might be a little thick. Um, let's, let's change that thickness to, I don't know. Point one eight. Pfft. Just, just gonna play around now. Uh, now let's move it. See how it's not in the middle anymore. So let's move it. There we go. That, there we go. All right. Now I know I have. I have. Oh, see how it's over to the left a little bit. We're gonna move that to the right. I know I've got my uh, twenty-eight millimeter dudes. I've, I've uh, measured a human. He's like one point seven five um, inches. So I want to make this about one point eight five. I want to make this door. Actually, that's not true. I'm going to make it 1.75 because we're going to put around the top, right? So, uh, inch and three quarters. All right. And now we're going to need to round the top. So here's our round roof. Down here, there's a bunch of different textures you can use uh, and play around with and mess around with and do things with. So this is, uh, this is uh, just what I want to use right now. What did I have this at? 0.18? Boink. And this is 0.8? Boink. I believe I'm going to grab this and I'm going to match it up there. Now I can just grab this little arrow in here and pull it straight up. Pull it straight. 
I want this whole thing to be about 1.875, but that's okay. You know, I can group this and then make it smaller. So let's, why am, why is that showing? That's, how wide is this? 0.8, and this should be 0.8, right? Yeah. All right, I guess that's right. I think it's off just a little bit, but we'll survive. All right. Now I got this going. I'm going to group these two so that I can make them. Um... Actually, I'm not going to group them. I can just select them together and I can say, hey, make this 1.75. 1.85. There we go. All right, looking good. Got me a door. It's about right in the middle. Actually, that might be a little bit too. There. All right. So now we want to make lines for um, the wood. So let me introduce you to holes. Holes cut stuff out in uh, in Tinkercad. So I'm going to make a hole out of this. And now when I, when I group it with another item, it will cut stuff out. So it's kind of like an eraser. So let's go 0.05. And actually, I could have just we'll go 0.05. And we'll do 1.8. It doesn't matter. 1.9. We'll go longer. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the height. My bad. I don't even know what I... No, this I just want to be 0.1. You know, and we'll go bigger than that. If I can grab a hold of it. 0.5. Actually, so this is the... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. 0.2. All right. And this is what I want to change is the height. So one point, let's just make it two. I'm going to group these two items together real quick. Here's our group button up here. And now it's one item. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy this because I'm going to use it again. I want to get, it, get this one out of the way so I can maybe have a, a prototype. All right, so I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to get this off of the base. I will definitely do not want this on the base. There we go. How big? How tall is it? I think we're fine. Um, that might be a little thick on. You know what? I'm gonna probably make that a little thinner. There we go. Point oh three. I like that. Now I'm. Now I need to put it where I want it. Yeah, about a third of the way. I could do it. You know, be a little bit more mathematical with it if I wanted to, but I'm not going to worry about it. And that is way too deep. I don't want it to be that deep. I don't want to mess up the print. So I just want a, a, a nice little indention. There we go. All right, I'm going to copy this and paste it and move it over. How's that look? Another board. See what we're doing here, guys? So I feel like this might be too far over now. All right, all right, all right. So let's grab these two. Nope. I'm going to click grab this one. And I'm going to hold shift down and grab this one. Yep, I'm going to copy, copy them, control C, and paste them, control V. Because I want the other doors, the other side too, right? Yeah, I do not want, I want to put this right at the same. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, but I want them out a little bit. I don't need such thick cuts. We don't want thick cuts. If thick cuts, it's gonna make a, it's gonna make the whole print a little bit not as sturdy. So I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit more. Yeah, it needs to probably pull that a little more. There we go. Now I can grab all of them and I can group them, and it's gonna cut my little lines for me. Bam! Look at that. And I got little wood line cuts. And you can see them here. If I could, if this will focus for you. Um, don't get on. I haven't finished painting these, by the way. But I'm not a great painter anyway. But yeah, you can see it cuts little lines. and looks like little door lines. That looks cool. All right. So now we need a couple. St uh, don't know what they're called. Those little strips of metal at the top of every door. Um, how big was our door? Our door was. How thick was our door, guys? Our door was 0.184. So I'm going to make this. Um, I want this to go all the way through.
So I'm going to do point um, two two. We'll just see what that does for us. Right? And then the door was how long? Point oh eight three. Point oh eight. No. Point eight. How long was that? Yeah, that's right. All right. So, oh, it's too thick. Too thick. Too thick. Um. Point oh six. All right, so I should see this on both sides. I want to see this on both sides. Yep. Yep, I'm going to line this up, and I'll pull it up. I'm going to put that right there at that crease. That's where that one should be. All right, that's good. That's good. Now let's copy it and paste it and put a second one down below it. What do you think? Right there? All right, that sounds good. Let's go. I feel like we should go a little lower. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. That was good, that's good. One last thing here, and I think we're almost done. Um, let me zoom in, is that? That's not lined up perfectly, there we go. Uh-oh, it's too long. 0.78. I don't want it sticking out. That'll look stupid. That's not right. All right. So now that I got it a little small, I'm just going to bump it over. And I think that one's fine. All right. Last thing. Let's make a door handle. I'm just going to use this little, this little snatchy snatch. Probably better things. Maybe a wedge. I could probably do a, I could do a half spear, make a door knob. But I, I tried that before. I didn't like how the round thing looked. I think I just stuck, if you can see the doorknob here, um, I just did a little tiny tick mark. That's what we'll just do for now. I don't think I want this. I don't think I want that. I think I want, see the wedge, all right? And so, all right, you see our little handy dandy handles? This, these turn, this turns the wedge. So I'm gonna turn that. And if you hold in the shift button, the shift button, if you're holding the shift key when you're doing it, it turns in, you know, 45 degree angles. So there's zero. Let's make this super tiny. What the? Another thing, guys, if you want the whole thing to go down uh, respectively, you hold shift whenever you make these shorter, and it takes the whole thing down or up. But I don't want to do that. I won't. That needs to be 0.22. So it's sticking out both sides, right? And I think we're about there. On this 90. Did not go. All right, I think that's done. There's a door, guys. So what we can do now, we can group the whole thing. I like to copy it, make multiple copies, and you know, push them around, print more, more than just one at a time. That's just me. But I'm going to group, grab the whole thing. I'm going to say group. You can always ungroup later. Don't worry about it. But now it's one item. If I don't I want both of these, I just want to export this one. I'm just going to highlight it. I'm going to click export. And I export as STL. That's what I use for 3D printing. Um, I also have to use G code because I have a mod T which needs the G code. If you need a G code, there's a really cool trick over here at Astro Print. You can uh, upload it into your design library. Go to astroprint.com, get a library, upload the file, then you can just say slice and it'll slice it for you. And when you slice it, it gives you right here, here's a G code file that you can use if you need G code. G code is the actual literal code of each layer. Um, so if your 3D printer has to have G code, you can do it there. Otherwise, you can use the STL file, print it out, paint it up, and start using doors. Start doing things like this. 
So yeah, here's our doors in action on my Ultimate Dungeon Terrain, a tutorial that I found from Professor Dungeon Master at Dungeon Craft Channel. He's amazing. You should check out his channel. Um, but yeah, we printed these doors out, and we can use them in gameplay, and they're awesome and fun. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was easy for you. Ask me any questions. Give me a sub if you'd like. I'm a brand new channel. I appreciate anything I can get. And uh, peace out. See ya.